Welcome to Lecture Online. In the previous videos, the two previous videos, we showed you how to use the method of sections to find the fours on any of the members in a bridge. Notice that we have the cut right here, and we managed to find the fours but on the member from C to D, on the member from D to G, and on the member from G to H. Now what we're going to do is we're going to try to find the fours on the member from B to C. There it is, that's our objective. But what we're going to do here is we're going to have our cut right here to the member. We're trying to find the force of, but we're going to do it two ways. We're going to use the left portion of the bridge and we're going to use the right portion of the bridge. And we should get the exact same answer when we do so. Notice that in both cases where we have the ending members and ending joints right here, we drew the forces as if these are compression forces. We did the same over, oh, no, not compression forces tension forces, we do the forces as if these members are under tension and those members are under tension, which may or may not be true, we don't worry about it. If we have the wrong tension or if we have it incorrectly, we simply get a negative answer, which means it's the opposite direction. Now to find the force FBC on this portion, on this section of the bridge, we're going to put our pivot point on G. The reason why we do that is we eliminate both this unknown and this unknown force, only leaving one unknown force. Also notice that the supporting ends of the bridge each have to carry a force of 9,000 newtons. We calculated this to be 9,000 on the previous videos. And then since there's a total load of 18,000 newtons, this side, and of course the perfect symmetry, should also be bearing a force of 9,000 newtons, which is indicated right there. So let's go ahead and sum up the moments about point G on the left section of the bridge. So the moment, the sum of the moments about point G is equal to zero. Notice I'll put an L here. This is the left side of the bridge and I'll put the L over here. You can see that this is relevant to that section of the bridge. Now, what are all the moments about point G? Notice we have a 9,000 Newton force making this a clockwise motion. That means a negative 9,000 Newtons minus 9,000 Newtons. And it's at a distance of six meters 3 meters and 3 meters total of 6 meters, as you can see over here, from the pivot point. A second force is this force right here, which gives us a clockwise moment. Not a clockwise moment, sorry, that's a counterclockwise moment. Counterclockwise, that's a positive 6,000 times a distance of 3 meters from F to G. And then finally, we have one more, the unknown right here, that's FBC, gives us a clockwise, that's negative, negative FBC, multiplied times the distance from there to there is a four meter distance as this indicator right there. We'll put the four that way. Moving this to the other side, we'll get four FBC is equal to minus six times 9,000, that's a minus 54,000, plus an 18,000, which means that FBC is equal to a minus 36,000 newtons divided by four, which is equal to a minus 9,000 newtons. Minus indicates that we have the opposite direction of what we should have. We drew FBC in that direction, but in essence, we know that FBC should be in this direction. That means it's a force of compression. This beam, this member here from B to C is under compression, and we have a force of 9,000 newtons on that beam between B and C. That's how we got that number using the left section of the bridge. Now use the right section of the bridge and we should get the exact same answer. Now calculating the force on the same member, FBC, let's use the right side section of that bridge. We're going to pick the point right here at G as the moment point. The sum of all the moments upon point G must equal zero. Let's add them all up. First of all, when, by picking the point there, we eliminate these three forces because they all go right through that point. We only have this force, this force, and this force to contend with. Using the first known force right here, notice that this causes a clockwise motion that would be a negative. This is equal to a negative 6,000 newtons. Multiply times the distance, which is three meters. Plus, because this gives us a counterclockwise torque, that would be plus 9,000 newtons. Multiply times the distance of six meters. And then here, this also gives us a, clock, a counterclockwise torque that also would be positive, plus FBC uh, times the distance from there to there, which is a four meter distance. 
which means I can move everything over to the other side, solve for this, we get 4 FBC is equal to moving this across, that becomes a positive 18,000 newtons. And then moving this across, 6 times 9 is 54, that would be a minus 54,000 newtons. And then dividing both sides by 4, I get the force BC is equal to a minus 36,000 newtons divided by 4, which is a minus 9,000 newtons. Again, I get a negative answer. Negative answer means that I drew the direction of that force in the wrong direction, which means that the force is actually in the opposite direction, which indicates a force of compression. That's why the member pushes away from, actually against the two joints that are joining them, and that would be a positive 9,000 newtons in the direction drawn. So it's also a force of compression. We can see now we get the exact same answer in both cases, either using the left side or the right side of the bridge, the left section or the right section, and we can do that for every member on the bridge. It doesn't matter which section of the bridge you use. Simply take the section in isolation, you look at all the forces acting on that section, and then pick strategic points about which to find the moment to calculate the forces on the unknown members, or I should say the unknown forces on the known members. That's probably better. And that's how we work with the section method.